Hello everyone, Nadlabs here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple bullet in the Godot game engine. And the reason I'm making this is because I can't find any really good um, bullet tutorials on the internet for Godot. And that's partially because it's new, partially because um, I'm bad at finding tutorials, but let's get started. So I'm going to assume you already have some sort of game. If you don't, I will be making a playlist of how to make a simple shoot 'em up game like the one you saw at the beginning um, in 30 minutes. But essentially what you want to have is a player, right? You're going to populate that uh, scene with a, right? Uh, usually players are kinematic by 2Ds. Two, two You're going to have a sprite, collision shape, right? Because that's necessary. You're going to well, you make sure you have a position 2D centered at the player, right? At 0, 0. And you're going to make sure that your gun or whatever weapon you're using is a child of it. And you're going to make sure that it's moved to the edge of the player or somewhere you want the gun to be held at. Then you're also going to make sure you want to have a camera and make sure when you... Uh, uh, add your camera to the scene make sure it's current and make sure it's enabled because if you don't have a uh, current on it won't follow the player and if you don't have enabled it will be it will look uh, really uh, herky-jerky it won't uh, if you don't have smoothing enabled then it won't it won't look nice basically what I'm trying to say then you also want to have a game scene where you're a player and a bunch of enemies or whatever your game is about uh, where where all that stuff is you want a scene outside of the player right and you're also going to want to have a bullet. If you want uh, particles for your bullet, make sure that whatever you do, you turn off low. You make sure that local coordinates is false or disabled. Because if you have them enabled, then this is what happens. You, you're going to get like a really, you're just going to have a block of particles that doesn't move. But if you turn off local coordinates, then it looks like a trail. And especially when your bullet's going fast, it's going to look like that. Which is obviously, it looks much nicer. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm just going to set it position back to uh, zero zero and what we're going to want the bullet to be is an area 2d that's very important because if you have it as a rigid body 2d then if you have more than 100 bullets Godot starts to slow down because you're ha you have like 100 plus whatever players and enemies in your scene and that's 100 physics bodies all using the physics framework and because that's not uh that's not uh that's not how you optimize performance so what you're going to want to do is make it an area 2d because that uh, lessens the impact on the Godot game engine or it allows uh, for the game to function better and use less processing processing power now i'm using the i'm just i'm literally just using the Godot um default icon.png because whenever i watch a tutorial uh, they have these crazy sprites and it looks amazing and i don't have all those sprites and it doesn't look amazing so i'm just using the sprites provided by Godot uh just to show that anyone can make this tutorial even if you have no sprites because you spawn, you you get one. So that's all you have to have. And you want to make sure that, uh, yeah, that's all you need to have. Um, for your enemies, make sure that they're in the group enemy, okay? Make sure that they have the group enemy attached to them because that's important when we set up the code to kill the enemy. So what you want to have is if you have an enemy for an area 2D, if you have an enemy that's an area 2D or a rigid body 2D, it doesn't matter. This works for both. That's one thing I couldn't find that any tutorial told me. They didn't tell me how to make an uh, enemy die if it was a rigid body or an area 2D. I really hated that. Uh, anyway, so this is the AI that controls the rigid body 2D. Super smart. Uh, we're, and also it has a function called function die. That's all you have to have. You can name it whatever you want. But for consistency sake and readability, you want to call it die. For your player, you want to have a couple things, okay? So I'm going, uh, I'm not going to assume anything. Uh, so you want to make reference to the gun, which I'm going to call as the uh, the actual gun scene, which I have, which is just uh, literally just a bunch of sprites put together from the uh, Godot uh, uh, icon.png, right? And I have a muzzle. This muzzle will become apparent later on, or it will become useful later on. So what we want to have is in our player script, we're going to have, um, this is just directional stuff, so we can actually just, I'm going to comment out the lines of code that aren't uh, necessary to what I'm trying to explain. So it just looks, it's just easier for you to focus on the colors. Go to distraction free mode, zoom in. And what we're going to say is, when we make this, uh, when the player is an instantiated, or when the player is created in the scene, we want to make sure that we get reference to its, uh, damn it. We want to make sure we get reference to its uh, position 2D and its gun, okay? 
after that we're going to make sure that the speed of the player is whatever uh whatever you want it to be that's that's up to you we're going to make sure that we have a variable called degrees for bullet and i'll explain what this bullet uh, variable does later on now uh one important thing i forgot to mention is that when you make your player you want to make sure that in your project settings you actually uh, go to the auto load and you make sure that you have a global script if you don't know how to make a script you go to file new script global ah, global i already have it so i i can't create it but once you make it you want to make sure that you go to your global script and you want to say variable player and that's exactly what i showed right there um when we went to the player script i said global dot player equals self and the way you get global to be in this like nice text and actually make it link to this script is you go to project settings auto load put in the path of the global script add it and that's sh that will work because that's how Godot works anyway so this will this is important when we want to set the rotation of the bullet uh this is just a uh, uh stuff for up like just this is just stuff for the game uh and we have a in every frame we want to make sure we do stuff to the gun so i made a function called gun stuff simple as that so i'm gonna actually get rid of this line because it looks ugly like that but we have we want to get reference to the mouse position okay a uh, variable mouse position is equal to uh, is a uh, vector two and is equal to get global mouse position in build function from godot now i remember i remember i said this uh um uh variable becomes important later on right here this is how we make sure that the bullet uh sorry this is just from my, uh me trying to explain to myself this is uh, how we make sure that the bullet actually rotates and is fired in a certain direction if we didn't have uh this line of code then it would be impossible or very hard to set the rotation of the bullet to what the to the difference between where the mouse and the gun is right so what i was trying to explain beforehand or to myself was the reason that this line of code is uh line of code is here is because if this is the mouse beautiful mouse and we say get global mouse position which is this red dot over here we're also going to make sure that we get mouse position dot angle two so angle to some point and that point is going to be the gun which is actually the position 2d of the gun uh dot global position right so if i'm not making sense i'm basically saying i want to get the position of where this gun is where this gun is not locally but with reference to the player right and if we saw if we look here uh with reference to the player it's for, uh, 40 um, pixels rightwards yeah and that's essentially what this red dot over here is and dot angle um angle to point just gets us the angle it returns the angle from here to here and then it gets us the angle and if you don't know why the angle is somehow set to uh the right side like this that's because how the that's how the unit circles defined that's how trigonometry works that's grade 11 math i'm not a grade 11 math teacher so i'm just going to say that the angle is going to be something like this it's going to be wherever this mouse is uh, with reference to the gun which is going to be here uh that's the angle it's going to return and that angle we're going to set degree for bullet simple enough and this line i commented out here and kept is actually if you use this if you use it the other way around you get the angle up here because it's it's going from the if i use green from the gun to the mouse it's going from here to here and it's actually going to return from it's actually going to make the angle from there and sorry it's actually going to make the angle from there and that's not uh, what we want because that actually makes it backwards and that's why you have to add pi when i'm just confusing you guys but make sure you do it from the mouse to the to the gun next we want to make sure that this is just for aesthetic purposes you don't need this whatsoever so i'm going to start uncommenting stuff because i'm going to have to jump around scenes and make sure everything works but this is just uh this uh, block of code here is just to make sure that if we look right here if we look right here you can see that the gun actually flips directions or uh it's uh um you can say it's it flips h which is um horizontally or vertically depending um i'm bad with directions but essentially it just flips right this is all that block of code does and you don't need it if you don't want but i was uh i i wanted to make it sure it, i wanted to make sure it looks nice so i want to say that when the global position of the player is less is greater than the mouse position i want to make sure that gun.scale.y 
is equal to negative one. And that essentially means that right here, it actually takes this, it goes to transform, it sets it to negative one, just flips it the other way around, flips everything the other way around. You don't want to make sure that the sprite is set the other way around. You want to make sure everything is set around. And that's why we use a no TD to hold all these sprites. And if you flip it, the if it's uh if the x value for scale is one, then it's rightwards, and that's essentially what this does. Now that's the player, right? That was a player. If we go to our bullet, we have a couple things we want to make sure we get. We want to make sure that when we uh make the uh bullet, when the bullet is instantiated in the scene, we want to make sure that its velocity is set to um uh, uh vector two, which is going to be consist of speed comma zero dot rotated by remember that global uh, thing I was talking about that's where it comes in global dot player and then you can reference the variable which is degrees for bullet and because it's be this um degree for bullet is being updated oops is because this is being updated every scene under a physics process it's going to be updated every scene and that allows you to have um the bullet be set to a certain degree and if I show you what happens if I put it here because that's actually what happened when I was making my first bullet, you can see that it moves around. And that's not bad if you want to make, whoa, that's actually pretty cool. If you want to make some sort of like controlling, oops, uh, if you want to make some sort of bullet that's being controlled, but the problem is when you make more, they all start to be controlled. And that's actually pretty cool, but uh, that's not where we're going for. Um, so we want to make sure when we spawn the bullet in, we want to make sure we set its velocity to something. Because then we're going to, every frame, we're going to say velocity times delta, which is just every frame, we're going to make sure that the velocity is going to be added to the position and that's what makes the bullet move. Now, this is the bl uh, blocks of code that were never shown to me in, in the tutorials I watched because I made the bullet that the tutorial said, but they never told me how to make the bullet die, which was really simple, or how to make the enemy die when the enemy was hit. Now, I believe I explained that in the, in, in the past or at the beginning of this video that make sure that your um, enemy is in a group called enemy. Dep if it's area body 2D or rigid body 2D, it doesn't matter. Just make sure both are called enemy. It helps with uh, in later on in your code when you're trying to uh, make new enemies. Just add them to the group and it automatically works as long as you have this function called dot die. Now, if the area is in group enemy, kill it, right? This is really helpful because if we have else if, oops, area. This is why I don't do live code tutorials. Um, is in group, uh, I don't know, helper or minion or whatever area dot nothing or area dot damage or whatever you want and there's another thing that is really helpful if we check if it's if the area is in group enemy and so we can like check other conditions right the logic gates and stuff this is just the uh how an end gate would and gate would work so or i'm confusing with gates but whatever if for whatever area is in group enemy and if that area has a variable called health which is greater than zero we can do dot damage or dot hurt or whatever you want to call it. This is essentially how you get rid of the bullet, right? Because whenever you hit an area, get rid of the bullet. Because this is actually, this essentially just says self dot Q free. But if you just write down Q free, it automatically assumes to be self. And then if the area is in group enemy, get rid of the enemy. And this is the exact same thing you can do for body. I'm hope I'm hoping this makes sense. Um, because I was never told this and it took me a, some time to figure this out. Now... That's all you should need to make sure that the player is able to set the bullet's velocity and rotate it and make sure uh, that the enemies die. Okay, that's all we need so far to, yeah, that's all we need. Now, if we go to the game scene, which is just where all your uh, player, where all your players, enemies, right? You just have this folder of enemies, right? And bullets and world environment. If you wonder how I have this glow, I literally just went to, I made a new environment, set the, this outside the scope of the video, but whatever. Uh, when I set the mode to canvas and I went to glow and I lowered the HDR threshold, right? Lower it is, the more glow there is. I believe it was 0.12, but whatever. Uh, yeah. I like that, whatever. Um, so essentially what I want to say is, so in the game scene, what we're going to make sure uh, we say is, we want to say that whenever we click, we want to make sure that the bullet is instantiated or instance. We want to make sure that the player, uh, the bullet is um, rotated properly so it doesn't look wonky. And we want to make sure that the bullet spawns from the muzzle. Okay, this is how we do it. We make sure that when, if uh, for 
the input event if event dot is action press shoot so that means when we click really so whenever we go to pro uh, so whenever we input map shoot Right, I, I just set it to make sure that the dead zone whatever is whatever you want. This allows uh, uh instead of you allowing to spam click, this to have make sure that happen every one second, you're allowed to make sure uh it, Godot make sure that you're allowed to click it. So just set it to left the button or space whatever you want. Controller, I don't care. We want to make sure that the bullet is a variable. If it's not a variable, there's problems because then we can't say bullet dot rotation or bullet dot global position because we're already adding it to as a child uh, we're already going to add as a child if we don't make sure or if we don't uh make sure that it's a variable so i'll just show you what i mean and i never understood why, I, why we had to make it a variable but this is why if you oops uh dot instance right if you you also need that dot instance if you if you do this something happens it happens in the zero zero where zero zero is and that's not what we want. We want to make sure it spawns from the muzzle of the bullet, of the gun. And we can't do that because we're adding it as a child. And I never understood why we couldn't just add it there. But I hope that clarifies it up. So we make this, uh, oops. We make sure that we have uh, a bullet as a variable, right? Pre preloaded scene dot instance. Make sure that's there because you get a whole bunch of errors you do not get. And this uh, er error uh, message doesn't really help me personally. It might help you. I don't know if you can understand that, but essentially what we want to say is that when we get this bullet, we, when we click, make a bullet. Okay, that very that bullet's preloaded into the RAM or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's preloaded into the RAM. I'm pretty sure. And we want to make sure that that bullet, whatever that bullet is, its rotation is set to this, which is the degree for bullet, right? And we're also going to make sure that the global position of the bullet is set to and I, I didn't make a reference to this as a on ready var right I'm, I wanted to make sure to read this you'll understand it so bullet dot global position where the bullet is in the scene we're going to make sure that's where the player is where the player's position 2d is right so I just went here um, editable children I made sure that editable children was true or on or checked and I'm going to show you step by step right so bullet dot global position is equal to where the player is where the player's position 2d is where that gun of the position 2D is, where that muzzle is. And that's why I said the muzzle was important because the muzzle can be here. And then you can have uh, your bullet spawning over there. But if you want it to look natural, like an actual gun, you might want to set the, the muzzle somewhere a little bit ahead of the gun, right? Because that looks a little bit better. And if we don't do this, then the bullets are going to spawn right here. And I can actually show you what happens if we don't do this. Um, game scene, right? Uh, go to scripts. If I turn this off, it spawns from the center of the gun. And that, that looks, it's not spawning actually because it's spawning over there because I'm not setting its position, right? But if I just did, uh, where the gun was and not where the muzzle was, we can see what happens, right? So if I do that, not goal position, it spawns from, it just spawns where the thing is. And because it's so close to the player, it just spawns from the center of the bullet, uh, the gun. And that looks horrendous. So dot slash muzzle. An add child, and that's all we need to make a bullet. And it gets rid of enemies, and I can easily show you right now. Uh, right, gets rid of enemies. And the reason uh, where the particles of the bullet die when the bullet dies is because that's how we set it up. That there's easy fixes to that. If I continue making this tutorial series, and uh, I'll explain why all these problems are here. But I just made this a quick uh, tutorial on how to make a really good uh, bullet in, in my opinion, a really good bullet. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching.